Hello viewers, I'm SB and this is Loop Hero. People seemed very excited, I've had a lot of requests for this uh, since the little bit of it that we got to play during the Steam Demo Showcase. And I do think there are some really cool ideas going on in here, so let's just jump right in. Uh, it did allow me to keep the save that we generated during the demo, but I figured it'd be best if we just start fresh here. And I remember the mechanics enough that I don't think we need a tutorial. Don't worry, I can explain it to you, it's not that complicated. The stars in the sky are going out, one by one. It seems to be a popular premise for a video game these days. But no one notices it, and no one could stop it. I'm racing to the last place where there is still hope. I need to make it before... Before it is too late. Before, you know, before all the goop pours out of space all over everything. That does seem very bad. Sounds of agony will quickly fade, and usually you'd be happy about something like that. But, but you know... The world will be destroyed. Even the memory of it will be gone. And even if there is absolutely no chance of bringing it all back, there will always be someone who is willing to do the impossible. For a certain, very loose definition of impossible, I guess. In a place without space. Without time. Without memories. Although you will quickly see that it is in fact not at all a space without memories. Um, so, we are... The sort of the meta the meta game here is that we are building this camp out. Uh, so we start by placing down our campfire, expending perfectly all of our resources. Gee, it's a good thing I remembered to bring a rock and a stick from home. Uh, and then I guess it's just time for us to set out on an expedition. So the skeleton of the game, so to speak, although I guess in in some ways it has many skeletons, uh, is that we'll go out on expeditions, we'll gather resources, we'll bring those resources back to camp, to build out camp with the intention of making us stronger on future expeditions to eventually be able to defeat the Star Lich, which is a pretty common structure if you've played any modern roguelikes at all. So here we are embarking on chapter one. Enemies are tiny and weak, but you know, so am I. So here's sort of the core idea of the game. This path, everything is wrong, but I remember, see I was just telling you. It looks like a completely different place and it's empty again. Do my actions have any meaning? <sighs> like I have a choice. If I need to give up and cry to save the world, I'm the worst savior of all. This this line doesn't... The writing in this game is not, like, amazing. This line doesn't make any sense at all. If you need to give up and cry to save the world and you don't do it, that would make you the worst savior of all. If all you have to do is give up and cry... It seems like the world's really easy to save. Just do that. Also, ain't nothing wrong with crying. In most situations, a little bit of crying is much more valuable than a little bit of sword swinging. So this is it. Our hero will just sort of progress along this circular path by himself. He'll fight monsters, he'll get loot, we will equip the loot on him. And you can see up here in the corner, uh, time is constantly passing. Days will pass while we are out here wandering around. And eventually, if we place enough items around the map, uh, this boss bar will fill up. And then the Lich will show up, and if the demo is anything to go by, he will absolutely destroy me. Uh, so we're just uh, we're gonna try to do a better job than I did that. Monsters will also drop these cards, these rocks that allow us to remember features of the landscape that can be beneficial to us in some way. So this will give us plus two HP and plus two more for every adjacent rock or mountain. And we're just gonna start building stuff up here. So you see our, ma our max HP went up by two and we also gained a building material. These are the things that we get to bring back to camp, the stuff that goes in the satchel. So all we're really doing here is trying to fill that bag and also, you know, not die. Not dying is good. And if we could kill the Lich, that would also be a good idea, but I'm not gonna... I hope it's not gonna blow anybody's mind for me to say that seems unlikely to happen right away. So a cemetery will spawn a skeleton every three days. I don't really know what is good, like, strategy. I'm just gonna kind of dot stuff around the map for the moment. So every time we kill a monster, it seems like we get a chance for some loot drops to occur. Ooh. Yeah, let's take that. Um, and as the battle goes on, as the, the our trip around the map goes on, it seems like stuff gets higher and higher levels. So you want to be fighting enough to get loot and card drops and stuff, but you also have to be careful not to overdo it and die. And I think that finding that balance is really what the core of the game is about. So this meta once placed will heal 2 HP at the start of every day, but the cards have a lot of hidden functionality. Uh, that some of which we discovered a little bit of during our um, 
during our time with the demo. So like this de this meadow heals 2 HP at the start of every day unless you put it down adjacent to anything, in which case it becomes a blooming meadow and it heals 3 HP instead. You can see as we pass through the, uh, the graveyard we get to pick up some loot, so it's important to put those down. Uh, I'm gonna hold off on these meadows for a second, because I want to make sure we can place them well, but I also don't want to surround the rock with them, for reasons that you will see shortly. Okay, a mountain. Uh, mountains and rocks like to be next to each other. You can see they both give bonus HP. And if we build a 3x3 three three block of rocks and mountains, sometimes but not always, it turns into a bigger mountain that is more effective. And I'm not 100% sure what the deal is with that. We'll figure it out. Uh, so we have absolutely no control in the battles. There's no abilities to fire or anything. The hero does everything on their own, and it's just our job to make sure that we're setting up situations where the hero has a uh, has the ability to pull things out. So, okay, I like regen. What else we got here? Just some, yeah, just armor. Well, we're picking up a lot of meadows really quickly. I'm pretty reluctant to put them down, though, until we have, <laughs> until we actually have a good spot for them. Uh, so this ring does damage to all enemies. This is regen over the bonus defense that we're... Oh, no, sorry. This is defense over the regen that we're currently getting. I don't actually know how effective defense is. I wish that there was, a, like, a tooltip on this that tells me what four defense means. I think for the moment, we're just gonna leave it. So as our backpack fills up, stuff will, stuff will eventually get pushed out the bottom. Ooh, that skeleton drops some, like, real gear. Uh, and every item that gets pushed out the bottom generates a resource for our satchel. So we do want to let this just pile up and turn into into garbage if we can. But also, obviously, it's a good idea to equip high-level stuff. Well, I really need some new cards. I need some non-meadow cards. Okay, rock. I'll take some rocks. Let's put a mountain down over here. Like I said, we're going to try to build a 3x3. And this grove will spawn a rat wolf. So I'm assuming that we want to try to space the enemies out as much as possible. We want to fight lots of things so that we get lots of uh, rolls on the loot table and lots of uh, cards generated and whatnot, I assume, again. But getting overwhelmed and murdered is never going to be a good thing. So the Road Lantern decreases the maximum number of monsters on adjacent tiles. Yeah, maybe put this down over here. Let's keep the skeletons from getting too much, uh, too much backup. And then 40% movement speed bonus and 20% attack speed for all units, including enemies, within its range. I don't really know. Where is that a good idea to do? Okay, we'll put it down over here in the area where we limited the number of enemies that can be near it at any time. And then I'm just going to feed it some meadows here. Uh, if you place down a meadow in a non-blooming position, it only I believe it only generates one point of resources, so... We're also getting extra stuff by doing this. Here we can... We know this is going to be the left edge of our uh, of our big mountain, so we can go ahead and put stuff down to the left of that. So we get new monster spawns when the day flips over. In most cases, it looks like. And time continues while we're in fights. So the more monsters we get on the path, the more monsters generate per round of the path. I think it's a balance we're going to have to be real careful about. Uh, even more cemetery? Sure. Let's just let's just really lay it out. And then a grove. We'll put it down. We'll put it down in range of the beacon. All right. And we've got a treasury. It gives a random resource after placing anything on an adjacent tile, but can't be built adjacent to anything. Let's put it down here so that we're building the mountain into it. This this will be our three by three for the mountain. And then because we've done that, we may as well meadow up. And if we completely surround the treasury, it gives a ton of extra resources. Uh, I think the meadows only bloom on orthogonal adjacency. Let's... Yeah, okay. And it, it, it doesn't... They don't bloom one place adjacent to other meadows. So that's fine. We'll place something here and bloom it later. I just wanted to make sure that that was something I actually knew and not just a thing I believed. We did pick up a level 2 ring... I have no idea if that's better. Again, the defense is a little vague. 
Uh, let's just put this... I mean, we want the mountains to be in the middle of the thing, right? Because they get a bigger bonus, so I guess I'll just put this here for now. And I'm sure that I will not be using optimal strategy at first, because, like, obviously I don't have enough information. I don't know what optimal strategy is, but we will get there. Attack speed over regen per second. It's, you know what? The best defense is very often a good offense. Okay, lots and lots of rocks. Uh, we are playing the game at maximum speed right now. You see, there's, a, there's 1x and 2x. This is, I don't, I feel like 2x is a little slow for my taste in the first place. I can't imagine what it's like to play the whole thing on one. Uh, yeah, that seems like a big upgrade. The skeletons have all the good loot, I guess. Ooh, vampirism. Yeah, give me, give me some of that. So as you can see, we're doing very well right now. We're, we're easily outpacing the danger posed by all of the monsters. Uh, I do not expect it to remain that way. So meadows can never be placed adjacent to the road. Do I want to just meadow here? Yeah, I guess that's fine. Not that we're necessarily in a big hurry to get these things out, since they only heal you once a day anyway. Alright, let's see if this worked the way I wanted it to. Okay, it sure did. So a bunch of extra resources and 120 HP plus 5 additional for each mountain and rock tile. But now it spawns a harpy every two days as well. So we're adding more enemies to the map as we're gaining more um, more damage or um, more stat potential. And like I said, for the moment, my plan is just going to be to keep adding enemies wherever we can, but spreading them out. The more we spread them out, the more time our um, our regen per second will have to work as well. We may as well just keep building the mountains up here, and you can see that one spawned a goblin camp. Every ten mountain or rock tiles pops one of these up, and these spawn a, a goblin nearby every day, and goblins are actually fairly tough. I think... let's place this here? It does say the effects of lanterns can stack. Yeah, let's, let's do this. Help keep the goblins from grouping up too much, maybe? I have no idea what the actual limiting effect of the lantern is. I, I don't know how effective they are. Uh, man, do I want to maybe just put down... We gotta put something here. I could just put a bad meadow in that position. I don't know, I'm not in a big hurry on this. Let's just, we'll bloom a meadow over here, it's fine. As long as we get it done before we leave. So, let's talk about leaving. We have a button here uh, that will let us just bail from the map when we hit the campfire. If we do that, we get to keep everything that we've pulled up to that point. If we get killed, we do keep some of our building resources when we get sent back to the camp, but it's far from everything. So I think I think it was less than half in the demo. So there's a balance, uh, like, you know, sort of a push your luck thing that we have to be wary of. Stop! Oh, where did these goblins come from? I, I don't remember r remembering you. Uh, we remembered ourselves. I would love to hear how that works. Now give us all you've got. You have no idea what's going on, right? Then why don't you help me restore order in this world first? And then you can do anything you want. Now, goblin must rob! No other order in the world! Uh, fair enough. I guess I don't have any valid objection here. Oh wait, I do have one. How about I just murder your entire face off? It does seem strange that robbing people would be the only order they know. That's a real stretch of the definition of the word order. I do love this goblin design, though. Second. Let's, what do we got here? 20% counter chance. Yo, that does seem very good. Obviously, the attack speed is working with our vampirism pretty well, though. Yeah, so I mean, so's counter. We'll, we'll, we'll vampire off of the counter strikes, I'm sure. It's strange how these creatures appeared here on their own. Maybe it means everything's not actually so bad, and the world is trying to restore itself. Or that even the apocalypse isn't enough to get rid of some pests. I mean, it sort of seems like the mountain remembered them, right? Which, that, that suggests that we're not on the hook for all of the effort here, at least. 
Uh, do I want to gain four attack speed while losing 12 evasion? Honestly, I don't know if I do. Evasion seems valuable. At some point, we're going to pull another card and finish that treasury, I swear. So we have a couple of these Oblivions in our hand as well. When played, they will, uh, you can nuke any established tile off the board, or you can nuke all of the monsters on a road tile. Uh, obviously, those things are both valuable in their own way. Mm, I think we're going to, well, all of our vampirism stuff, yeah, having high base damage is really important. I was thinking I like the attack speed on the sword, but yeah, we should probably just hit harder. Hitting harder is like strategy. Oh, this just has vampirism on it itself. I'll take it. You know, it's not like healing's exactly super difficult to come by, but... Am I allowed to place a beacon down here? Yeah, okay, let's just use this to wrap up the treasure. So you can see a whole bunch of stuff. We got some, some gear, but the empty treasury... Uh, also spawns a gargoyle every three days, and I don't think we have a lot of control over where this thing ends up, so good luck, us. Also, Vampire Mansion. Adds vampires to battles on adjacent tiles, and I remember that the vampires give lifesteal to creatures that, that are in the fight with them, so we don't want to put it near something really dangerous. Like, I'd like to keep it away from the goblin thing. Let's put it, like, up here, maybe. <laughs> And just put down some more rocks. So yeah, rocks adjacent to the mountain and to the, the high peak are both giving us 5 HP. Yeah, we'll just surround this. And I think, do, do we get a little bit of healing at the campfire each day? Is that is that a thing the campfire does? Yeah, 20 HP when we enter it. Okay. More vampires. Let's put them over here again, safely away from everything else we're doing. So the red wolves are hitting pretty hard here. Ooh, another treasury. That is a really nice find. So, where do we want to build a treasury? We could put it down over here and then put the vampire mansion next to it. And then we can just start building rocks. I, they'll be less effective over here, but like, I, I want to make sure we get this treasury enclosed. Also, I guess we should have a look at some of this gear. This shield does not have vampirism, but it does have a little bit of extra defense and damage to all. I'm not 100% sure how damage to all works. Is it like damage that splashes every time you attack? There could be, there could be a little bit more information. It's fine. We'll figure it all out in time. Uh, you know what? I'm still gonna place adjacent to the mountains for the moment. Let's just keep generating as much HP as possible. The Harpy. No! What do you, what do you mean, no? You want to save the world, and you want to ask for help. Our answer is no. How did you... Wait, why no? Oh, we see far away. We see deep inside. For a long time, there has been just emptiness instead of sky. But it doesn't stop us from seeing. Your saving of the world is one-sided and naive. Each person sees their own way of saving the world. That is why no one will ever join you. Fine, I don't fully understand it, but tell me your version. What does to save the world mean to you? My progeny and my kin, for them to be strong and live. It's a part of the cycle of life and death. It is life itself. It is the world. I will kill you and feed your remains to my starving younglings. And life will go on. And how many lives does your blade give birth to by killing again and again? Only- Okay, well, she said one. That's better than I thought she was going to give us. Uh, look, I don't want you or your children to die from starvation. Please, try to see reason. If my mission succeeds, the harpies can have all the sky and all the hunting grounds they need. I can't feed my children with your beautiful words. It's time to say goodbye. Oh, all of a sudden she's interested in my words again. I see how it is. I do feel like she has a pretty short-sighted plan here. Ugh, I feel awful. By fixing one evil, I'm becoming a source of another. There's no home for harpies except the highest mountains, but there's no food there. 
I can't imagine how they managed to survive if their mountains were cut from reality. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to interrogate what the word survive even means in this circumstance anyway, right? But again, it does seem like our memories are to some degree remembering things themselves. So, I don't know what that means. I have no idea where I was going with that. For the moment, things, to be, th things seem to be pretty under control. We're generating enough health to survive... Ooh, spiders. Spawns a spider on an adjacent tile once per day. Let's put this down somewhere where it's not going to be terribly threatening, and also where it's affected by the road later. Back off, human! Oh, a vampire! But where are your lands? If your farmers need help, I'd be glad to offer it. I really want to give up this monster fighting thing. I would love to just tend a field. Uh, no more lands. No more flock. Only hundreds of years of emptiness. And hundreds of years of hunger! And also, bad manicures, apparently. Save yourself while you still can. I don't know how long I'll be able to keep my head straight. What hundreds of years are you talking about? <laughs> Your mind is easy to trick, but you can't trick my hunger. I, okay, I guess that makes sense. It demands its share. Every sip, every drop of blood will go to satiate it. I'm too weak, but you can help me and I will set this crumbled world right. Right, I'm doing this not just for myself, but for everyone, in the name of good. So be grateful for my hard work and just let me bleed you dry. You know, okay, he's a vampire who's talking about working for good. I appreciate the sort of non-standard characterization there. You know, the game's trying to be thoughtful with how, with how it's presenting these very standard fantasy monsters. I'm into it. And vampires often owned our lands. They kept the peace and helped our settlements to prosper. But this won't do at all. Now they're just pale shadows of their former selves, both physically and mentally. Apparently the blood of other creatures can't sustain them. And he wasn't joking about the hunger. Even the creatures that stand near him are imbued with the power to devour someone else's life. Character, making sure that we get the game mechanics at play here. Uh, more spiders. Where do we want to put more spiders? Like, over here? The rat wolves move out of the grove, so we're gonna end up fighting spiders and rat wolves together. Like, right here should be fine. That should be far enough away from the vampire mansions that they don't creep up on us. Uh, this road lantern can go right here and work for the uh, work for both the vampire mansion and that treasury. And yeah, you can see the monsters like they seem to want to group up for safety, which makes sense. Uh, I assume we're gonna eventually get access to the rest of these equipment slots by building out our town. Oh wow, that's a lot of rocks. We could try to build another... Actually, did I leave us a 3x3 space? Yeah. We could try to build another 3x3 up here, but my experience in the demo was that I couldn't get another one of these to pop. It might have, it might be that you can only have one at a time. And we are kind of running out of space to build over here. Alright, you know what? I'm going to do it. Let's go... That there, rock there. We kind of want the mountains to group up, even though this is not going to put them adjacent to that thing very much. And honestly, that's not a terrible place for that goblin camp to show up. Could be a lot worse. I don't know where we're going to put this vampire mansion, though. Yeah, you can see the goblins. The goblins start to get pretty tough. I do not know what the colors mean. Yellow's probably higher than blue, right? I mean, this just seems, this seems like a much better weapon. So do we even want to put down another vampire mansion? I guess is the question. We don't want to raise the danger level too much, but again, we very, very much want to make sure we're getting loot as frequently as possible. And we're filling the bar. I don't know if filling the bar is actually having an effect on, like, the loot over time, or if loot gets better just, like, the more seconds you spend on the map. To some, to some degree, I guess we're just gonna have to, like, wander into these answers. So I couldn't find a place to put it where it wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna have some serious effect, but hopefully Vampire plus Ratwolf will turn out not to be beyond us. Uh, that is just strictly better than the one we're using. 
I guess I didn't even look at this, but I assumed with it being base quality that it would not be interesting. So yeah, maybe we're pushing a little bit. We are having a little bit of trouble maintaining our health level right now. Okay, so we lose the evasion, but we gain counter and vampirism. What if I just got hit way more often, <laughs> but also we leech more life? And I mean, the, the counter is both offense and defense, since we will we will leech off of the uh, off of the counter itself. Uh, more cemetery, and I think we're just gonna we're going to continue putting things down in reach of the road lantern. So, like, this is a great example of what I was talking about. If there were fewer things on the on the path, it would probably take us less than three days to walk a circuit, and as such, there would be way fewer spiders. We can do that right there, and then let's put this down here. That'll be a nice, a nice HP boost. But I don't think we should have trouble filling out that treasury. Even more cemetery. Okay, well. I kind of like the way it looks all, all stacked up like this, but I am a little worried that we're maybe creating a situation where we're just... Um, we're having to fight a lot of relatively difficult skeleton enemies in a row right before our big heal. I was thinking, after we fight these skeletons, we're sure going to want to get healed up, but... Hopefully that will not turn out to be too late. I sure wish our counter percentage was higher. Rocks is nice. This does not have the vampirism on it. It does have more counter and damage to all and better base damage. I am reluctant to lose vampirism. I might be I might be overvaluing it. That's not impossible. Okay, so do we want to wrap up the treasury? Do I think we're going to be leaving the map soon? Maybe. I'm going to go ahead and put the mountain here. And then, yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Also, you do get actual combat gear. This stuff matters, too. So, minus 15% vampirism, but plus evasion and regen. Again, uh, a little a little reluctant to lose the vampirism, but this is, this is a lot of stuff overall. 2 HP per second. Yeah, you know what? I'll do it. That's going to add up an awful lot over the walk around the, uh, the loop here. Alright, more, more HP, please. Uh, I guess we could build it, like, over here. It doesn't really matter where we put this. And then another mountain, and I guess we're just going to see. We'll build our 3x3 three three right here and see if it works. I'm pretty sure it won't. Uh, it feels to me like this area could use a road lantern. Although I guess I'm not actually looking at how how much is the road lantern limiting enemy grouping to? Seems like it's still no problem for there to be three enemies on a square, even next to one. Hmm. Yeah, that's less effective than I would have liked it to be. Do we want to put down another spider cocoon? Is this pushing it? We can bail out of here anytime. Like I said, this first time around, I do not think it's terribly likely that we're going to beat the boss. So I'm not, I'm not looking to actually fill up the boss bar. Um. Yeah. Maybe we could use some evasion. I could, I could see that being the case. All right. Does it work? No, this th this three by three didn't do it. So okay, it's it may well be the case that you can just only have one of them per map. This will be good here. Meadow there. Do I want to raise? It's like an attack speed boost probably benefits me more than it benefits the enemies most of the time. You probably don't want one of these buffing goblins. I think you have to be careful about that. But like here, it should be fine, right? Gosh, I hope so. Especially since a lot of my health is coming from vampirism, it feels like a significant attack speed boost is also quite a bit of survivability. 
Yeah, that worked pretty well. Do we need more spiders? Yeah, I mean, I may as well put it down. We're picking up lots of, uh, lots of loot from them, at least. Also, if I'm being honest, I would really, really love to see another, um, another treasury spawn, so I may be a little bit greedy for that reason. I guess... And then... This blooms that meadow. That's nice. And yeah, I guess we just build stuff adjacent to the existing mountains and rocks. Oh, that does put a goblin camp down there. We could Oblivion the Goblin Camps or something. I think I'm going to. Let's let's bail. Alright, so we'll we'll return to camp next time we hit the campfire. I'm gonna delete some goblins from our path, because they're scary. And then Maybe we'll clear that other goblin space when we approach it. Since we're not sticking around too long, probably the, be the better thing for me to do than clear the camp and the goblins would have been just to blow up the goblins as we approach. Do that three times instead of, instead of doing what we did. Oh, no, the spider's impossible to hit. Okay, we got there. I wonder if we should oblivion off the skeleton plus ghost? How dangerous are ghosts? about to hit the end of a day here, so the, the healing from the meadows will kick in. A battlefield spawns a chest at the start of each loop. Well, we're, we're not going to get a lot of benefit out of that. I am, in fact, going to nuke this. Let's, let's not deal with all those goblins. I don't know if this is a reasonable set of resources to pull out here, but... It seems like a lot of stuff. Uh, we might get healed again. Can I place this? No, I cannot place stuff during combat. Ooh, a level 7 shield. Yeah, okay, that seems interesting. The regen per second is probably a little bit lower in value right now at this moment, since we're only going to be on the map for a little while longer. Gosh, I hope we can actually survive these skeleton fights. It's getting a little close. It's getting a little close. Um, I'm going to keep the evasion on, and we're going to just establish another road lantern. It is not going to lower the number of skeletons. Yep, I might have I might have overstayed my welcome here. I might have overdone it with these spawning enemies for us to get loot from thing. Death does not favor the fallen, but it made a little exception for you. Well, that's nice of it. Okay, so we get to keep 30% of our resources. Like I said, I think it's going to be really important for us to figure out the appropriate balance of spawning enemies in for additional loot versus ending up with too much stuff on the road and getting murdered. Oh, I can't believe it! Hey everybody, the boy managed to return! Uh, survivors? Does this mean I'm not alone anymore? Where did you even come from? Is there still a place without darkness? Uh, well, we, we don't know where we came from. Or, we can't remember. These people you see are only a small part of what's left of the group, I, I think. You're not sure? Well, we're not sure. We reached that conclusion because of the abandoned luggage and the leftover rations. And with each day, new signs of presence of people that, as far as everyone here knows, have never even been with us. It's like we forgot them. But they're remembering, you know, the difference between the days. That's a good sign. You forgot? It's blown away. I didn't I didn't know that people were forgetting things here. Yeah, exactly. It's like people disappear every day and we instantly forget they even existed. Almost as if we forgot the place we came from. And our families. And maybe even ourselves. My name is Yoda. That's the part I still remember. Nobody else's memory is in much better shape. That's why I remember so little about myself. Everything's forgotten. They really want to, like, hammer this home. As I was saying, I don't think the writing in the game is necessarily great. 
But wait, you said that I'd managed to return? That means you remembered I was here. Yeah, that's why it's so important to us. We saw you leave, but you were gone before we could approach you. Listen, we can't wander around in this emptiness anymore. There's a campfire and a few sleeping bags here. A real luxury in these dark times. What do you say? Oh, yeah, of course. I'd be very grateful if we could team up. I want to restore everything. I've begun to remember the world as it was before, I, I think. But there's no point to it without other people. It's too lonely without them. Remembering the world? I, I don't understand what you're talking about. I'm too exhausted. But we'd be glad if you could help us. And we'd be glad to help you. Just don't ask us to go with you. I don't know how you managed to return, but for us, leaving the group is too dangerous, I assume. I will ask no such thing of you. For now, I just want to have a place to return to. A place where I can hear other people's voices. I feel like we kind of got the idea here, and there's been like ten additional dialogue bubbles past that point. Oh good, more, more text. And we weren't joking about helping you. Here are the few things that survived the cataclysm and don't vanish away. And can't be forgotten. Take them. You might need them. Okay, so some real basic building materials. I'm assuming the stats page is not... Yeah, this is not actually, like, useful information. It's just... Just information. So, let's start building things out. I have no idea. It looks like we can't see the descriptions of things before we have the ability to unlock them. So, the hands of the herbalist always remember how to mix dried herbs and brew potions. You can take up to three potions with you. Two are refilled at the camp. The heal 4% of max HP. I wonder if that... Um, if the the potions will be used automatically by the hero, or if that'll be a button I actually have to press. Smithy will let us start with gear and craft tools. Okay. Well, the only thing we can actually afford right now is a field kitchen. So, unlocks the Blood Grove card. Okay, I'm into it. I don't know if um, it actually matters how we position these, but we connected to a thing here. That seems good. Do you know the difference between a good cook and a bad cook? The food made by a good cook is tastier. Oh, I, I thought it was going to be like a joke or so. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's probably right. What? You're waiting for something more elaborate? Sometimes the truth is very simple. Look, I have a cauldron, a hearth, a couple of knives, a bucket of potatoes, three onions, and some ham. Nothing special. Everything is very simple. But give me a few minutes and everyone in this camp will be running to my table, following the tasty smell of a good stew. Man stew with some potatoes and it does sound pretty good right now actually so uh, we're not able to build any of the stuff that comes off of that yet either okay the refuge just unlocks a whole new class that seems like a good thing to have unlocks the ability to gain special traits after killing monsters and expeditions okay we don't exactly know what these resources are but hopefully we will get them let's go ahead and do one more before we call it for the day uh, and we have the ability to Alter our deck. So is this... We must have at least two of these and can have up to six of them? Let's... Yeah, okay. We must have at least two. So what does the Blood Grove do? Can we place it near a forest? Its roots devour enemies that have less than 15% health left. Okay, yeah. This was in the... This was a thing we played with in the demo. Well, the vampires seem very dangerous. I don't know if we actually want that. <laughs> this spawns chests. I think we definitely want those. Crystals that are able to er, refract not only the light of the rising sun, but the passage of dawn itself doubles the effect of a day's passing. So sometimes that's going to mean uh, extra monsters. But if we put this down by some meadows or something, that seems pretty good. And then, like, do we want the vampire mansion? The vampires probably drop good loot, is my guess. Oh, actually, we can only have 12 cards turned on anyway. Yeah, all right, we'll skip that. Let's do it. So I think at this point you kind of get the idea. This is uh, this is what we have in store for us, and eventually, like actually getting good enough to defeat a boss, hopefully. Uh, let's open with a treasury. That seems like a great idea. So we probably want to put this down adjacent to this mountain that we're about to build. Yeah, this gives us enough room to to do everything we want. And we'll have to, like, we'll have to experiment with putting different cards next to each other and seeing if there are any, like, combos or anything to grab. Uh, I mean, just, like, rat wolves kind of generally in front of us, but we can... This time, we can get the wood without having to get a fight. 
and figuring out like things like is, is it a good idea to place a tenth mountain? Like, is the hit points do the do the hit points offset the harpy? Uh, spawns a chest at the start of each loop. Seems like a good thing to put right in front of the campfire, right? And then can be placed near a forest adjacent to the road. Then we may as well put down another grove, right? Oh yeah, and if we mouse over the enemies, we can actually see. Although it looks like I can't, I can't mouse over the tooltip, so we can't read what their abilities do. Uh, let's go meadow. And if we're gonna put down a spider cocoon, like I don't want to group up the enemies too much, but also I do want the cocoon to be near the blood grove. Yeah, we'll just do it here. It's fine. We can fight wolves and spiders. We'll try to get a road lantern near that as quickly as possible. Uh, more mountain. And the, I mean, the skeleton loot is good. Putting all the skeletons right at the end of the loop does seem a little dangerous. So enemies on adjacent tiles can become ghosts. Let's maybe put this like over here. I don't know how dangerous a ghost is, but it does seem like a little bit dangerous. Also, I should actually remember to equip my gear. All right, so we got ourselves some chrono crystals. Um, let's go ahead and put down... We probably want a mountain to form the center of this, right? These are like chrono crystal here. Oh, the chrono crystals have to go near the... Hmm. So it doubles the effect of a day's passing. I don't really want to double the effect of anything that we have out here right now. And this thing is not day-based, it's loop-based. So I guess the chrono crystals are mostly useful for causing it more enemies to spawn. I don't know. We'll hold on to it for a moment. I don't know what the circles at the top represent either. It might be like rarity. Uh, spider cocoons. So let's give them a little room from each other here. Okay, interesting. There seems pretty good. So okay, each time we loop, that's what increases the effect of uh, the the power of the gear we're finding. Uh, I mean, if we put the chrono crystal down here and then meadow behind it, we can at least get a little bit of benefit that way. Yeah, that's something. Unfortunately, you can never... I, I should have put it here, I guess. Well, whatever. We can put other stuff around it. That makes sense. So do we... I don't want to just complete the treasury. I guess let's, um... Let's meadow up along the top of the, the peak. And, yeah, this is definitely an upgrade. And unfortunately, gear that you unequip is just lost forever. Just... You forget about it instead of turning it into, uh, into loot. Okay, 6 to 10 with some vampirism and defense. Yep, I do believe that's a winner. It's easy to get confident right now at the beginning of the loop. Uh, ooh, more battlefield. Let's do a battlefield here. I love chess. And then do we want to start in case... I mean, we can just put down a meadow over here. That's fine. Oh, that's probably, yeah, the effect of the blood roots. Okay, that is probably an upgrade. And that is probably not. Yeah, wow, we are really taking them apart. Rocks and road lanterns, probably like here. That seems good. Even more chrono crystal. That meadow is going to be the best meadow of all time. That's enough for us to cap this off. I, we should finish it with rocks, right? And then put down a real mountain adjacent to it. 
Okay. That's a little unfortunate. Those goblins are going to be able to gang up with the other stuff nearby, and they are not subject to the blood roots there. Should probably keep putting down spiders for the moment. Yeah, like, the goblins, I think, are, are by far the most dangerous things. Let's do this to just keep working on the treasury. Okay, well, if the goblins decide to go over to the grove, I guess they're, they're vulnerable to the, uh, the blood grove there, at least. And for the moment, we're holding strong. That should be pretty good, I would think. It is a little weird that you have to fight the treasure chests, but I appreciate that you do get lifesteal off of them. That's, that's very helpful. Uh, so we lose the regen for attack speed and a considerable boost to our base damage. Alright. It feels like we've gotten just less equipment this time, I feel like. But maybe... Oh, hey, it's a million. Why? Why do these... Why do good things always have to happen to bad people? Wait, the other way around. Which one of, which one of those things am I... Uh, so we probably want a road lantern, like... It's unfortunate. The only way to get a road lantern to affect that tile is to put it here. I guess the overlap's not wasted, though, right? And then more HP. I do like this, like, building your environment mechanic. And I think the, the... Sort of the thematics of it are cool. The thing that it represents you doing in the world is neat. There's a lot of there's a lot of cool ideas in this game. Okay, it can only be placed adjacent to a forest, so I've not actually left a good. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll get that down eventually. Oh, we must have knocked him to just a tiny bit above Blood Grove. New Grove. Let's put it down here and then. Oh, sorry, not Meadow. And then Blood Grove there. And I mean, we can Meadow here. It'll still be affected by the Chrono Crystal, so we'll just have to put something else here to bloom it. And then we still also actually need to finish off that treasury at some point. But like the later we the later we finish it, the better the burst of loot is gonna be, right? So yeah, I don't know exactly what we want to do with that. Uh, I guess we could just put this here. That'll be fine. Despite my best efforts and also me actually placing a lantern over here, this area that we're in right now has gotten real dense with enemies real quickly. Um, I'm going to hold off. We're not going to finish that just yet. What do I want to do with this beacon? I'm a little, a little leery of placing a beacon in a place where it's going to give so many enemies so much of a boost. Honestly, I kind of think beacons are maybe bad. We're going to use this beacon to finish that treasury. <laughs> maybe that's what we do with it. All right, so we do have some oblivion. We can undo, uh, undo some mistakes potentially. Let's put this down in a place where it's going to enable an interesting blood grove, like right here. Yeah, I think that makes sense mountains and more rocks and whatnot. I guess if you're on a heavily counter-based strategy, giving the enemies more attack doesn't seem so bad. So if we're thinking we're going to put the Blood Grove here and potentially there... I guess we don't... Hold on. Does this, uh, does the cemetery, it does say every three days. So we don't really want to put it adjacent to the Chrono Crystals. Yeah, I'm gonna put it over here. If we draw enough blood groves, we could, we could theoretically build out that top area with the... Uh, you get to go here, and... Yeah, we still got room for spiders. What is that on the road over there? It's 
like a real weird looking slime. Blood path. Spawns a blood clot every four days? Huh. Okay, well, apparently building building battlefields... I don't know, uh, did that happen after we built the second battlefield, or was that there with the first one? Well, it can't have been with the first one, right? Because that's the only tile that's in range of two of them. And the other, the other tiles near them have not become blood path. So, okay, that's interesting. This ring at least theoretically could be an upgrade. I don't... Yeah. I think we're okay. It is a lot of extra HP, but we're not... That's not a problem we're having. It doesn't matter what your max HP is if your healing, incoming healing is good enough. Uh, yeah, we'll do this. And then, you know what? I will beacon to bloom that. That's how we'll solve that problem. I don't know if that's actually going to work the way we want. We'll try to try to eyeball this on our next... Uh, it's awkward, because it, it was right after we hit the camp, so we kind of healed anyway. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea if that's actually working the way we want it to. It's hard to tell if that... Well, it, it seems to be less dangerous than a Mimic, at least, but like we are actually kind of getting beaten up in this fight. Does it look like orange is better than yellow? Probably yes. Let's see, this has some regen instead of the counter. Honestly, that doesn't seem bad. We lose some vampirism here, but we get damage to all. I'm not 100% clear on what magic damage as a stat is doing. Is it just like damage that's not reduced by enemy armor, potentially? I don't even know if our enemies have damage reduction values in that way, though. Um, I guess let's leave it for now. Like, when in doubt, we should probably not equip stuff, right? So that things are cycling off the backside of the backpack. Uh, meadows... Yeah. I guess we can just meadow around these these things. Doesn't hurt. Uh, let's road lantern... Um, here, maybe? Oh, no, probably over here. <laughs> this seems like a good place for one. Okay, so the Road Lantern did knock the fourth enemy off of that space. Yeah, I definitely know where we want to build a Blood Grove now if we pull one. That second Goblin Camp sort of made the choice for us. Maybe I'm overvaluing, like, lifesteal and stuff. Maybe we need to be... We need to just have better defense, better raw... Better raw, don't lose health in the first place kind of strategies. Okay, this is where things are going to get a little hairy. So what is that? Ah, he enrages. He is living and has a soul. Well, that's good information for us. Really makes me feel a lot better about murdering him with a sword. What does it mean to have a soul? Apparently that's just like a measurable quality a thing can have in this world. Uh, regen and evasion. It's kind of a lot of vampirism. But evasion does seem like a pretty good thing. Yeah, alright. Like I'm saying, maybe maybe we need to be more on a, uh, a lose less life strategy. Rather than a lose life and then regain it strategy. It would be nice if the hero was always smart enough to go after the goblin leader. It's clearly not the way things usually go down. Maybe it's a good idea to not fill the board up so much early so that we get a couple of loops off and then we start gathering more more health more quickly. Or more, uh, more good loot more quickly, rather. Okay, I was about to see if a level 5 bad sword is better than our, uh, our yellow, but actually, it turns out don't even need to do that comparison. More chrono crystals. Uh, and spiders could go here pretty safely, I think. 
Yeah, I might just be I might just be overloading the path though. My greed for loot may be too great. It may be maybe slightly dooming us. A small amount of doom. I do like that the road lanterns let you establish a bunch of greed early and then sort of pull back after the fact, though. I think that's useful. Okay, lots of good cards there. First of all, Blood Grove, absolutely. Secondly, uh, another meadow for here I like a lot. And then I'm not allowed to meadow. Oops, that's not even the meadow button. Not allowed to meadow there. How much stuff do we have? So what is the what is the 17 and 9? Preserved rock, suitable for building, some food, okay, that's good, feed people, stable wood, okay, so things have, like, yeah, things have shards, is the deal that we have, we are currently holding 17 shards and 9 real objects, that's what it is, okay. And I'm sure that the, um, the types of loot that you get are based on what you're fighting so probably that once we understand what things drop what that'll probably play into our deck building strategy a lot um for right now i think we can probably grove over here ish just let it let the blood uh maybe let's do it in the corner and then yeah just meadow meadow somewhere but we might be approaching the point where we need to get out of here if we want to deliver all of these actual resources I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off on this for right now. We should have a lot of healing incoming, and again, we're gonna try to eyeball this at the end of the day here. Uh, I don't know if we do want to put down any more chrono crystals. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on that. Okay, so we're at 484. Well, I guess let's let's wait until we're a little closer to the uh, to the actual day flipping over before we try to watch that too closely. Okay, so. 598. That was a lot of health. Ah, I'm not gonna be able to just do that math. Just like eyeball the number of meadows we had and what the what the HP gain should have been. And unfortunately, pressing uh, space to pause doesn't pause things while you're in battle, which is weird. That definitely should be a a consistent function. Okay. Well, we certainly don't ever want to stop putting down rocks and stuff. Although at this point, we probably built this out as much as we're going to usefully. So it'd be a lot easier for us to count if we caught the end of a day when we were not in battle. Ooh, another blood grove. Uh... We don't currently have any enemies spawning over there. We could put this down... Like, we have a grove, too. So we could grove here and then blood grove there. That'll help. Okay, we're about to have a great big goblin fight. So we are at 729 right now. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Uh, shoot. 4... 8, 12, 14 meadows. So we would expect 42 health when we flip over if the chrono crystals are not doubling the output of these ones. But we got like... Yeah, we definitely got more than that. We got considerably more than that. I think it is working the way we want it to. I mean, then that makes sense. That's, that's commensurate with the text. We might actually just want to start building a new mountain somewhere else. I think I'll do that. Ooh, treasury. Not a lot to build in here. Okay, let's, um... Yeah, let's start building a treasury up over here. So a road lantern seems like a great idea. Uh, and then we're just... We are only interested in surrounding this treasury at the moment. I think we can go ahead and kill this one. Although, honestly, that gear was not all that good. And then, yeah, start building this out. I'm not going to put down any of these spider cocoons. I 
think we might have enough enemies out already. This is an unusual design for armor, though. Have we seen this before? It's just a big reflect armor. Yeah, those spikers are putting out some real garbage. Dropping tier 2 gear for us. Alright, well the grove is doing a fine job of feasting. Uh, the cemetery is probably not directly relevant right now, but like... I was about to say, ah, but we're getting back to full health, but of course we're getting back to full health, because we just had, uh, we had a day changeover, plus we hit camp. I think we're gonna, um, hold off and place him. Well, we could put a skeleton over here somewhere, and it probably wouldn't be a big deal, though. Maybe, like, here? Yeah, I'll do it here. Alright, so now we get a pair of blood clots, and we can get a real good sense of how we're doing against these tougher monsters. They are having a hard time getting through. Honestly, I feel like we're pretty strong. We can probably we can probably hang out for another loop. And you know, at least we're picking up a lot of uh, a lot of gear, even if it is almost entirely garbage. A little bit less regen, but a little bit more. Yeah, that seems good. And this will drop us four vampirism, but give us a ton of attack speed. Honestly, I'm really liking the regen per second. No, I think we can... That seems like an okay trade. Alright, continue building this. Alright, here's where things start to get a little bit ugly. This is the, uh, the nightmare corridor. Yeah, that's probably not right. There's a lot of vampirism, though. What about you? Magic damage up. We lose all the counter, but we get 5 defense on top of the 13 defense. I don't know. That doesn't... The other shield has higher base defense anyway. That doesn't necessarily seem relevant to me. Okay. Uh, meadow and... Rock and... Uh, rock, I guess? Oh. Oh, did I fill the bar? Shoot, I wasn't paying attention to the bar. Oh, well, we're not going to survive this. Uh, um, yeah, that's not great. I'm going to put this down here so we can use a spider cocoon in part of the building. Sure, move faster. Uh, cemetery. My cemetery under you, do you get the stuff for walking through it? No. You get it upon entering the tile, I assume. Well, we might be able to build out the rest of this treasury. Maybe. Very difficult to imagine us surviving this, though. Oh, hey, that's a whole flesh golem. Where'd that come from? What did I do that allowed flesh golems to spawn? I mean, we seem tough-ish. Wow, that's a lot of loot really quickly. Hold on a second. Uh, so keep the regen, lose a point of counter, and two magic damage for a ton of vampirism. That seems okay. Then here we lose our attack speed and vampirism. I don't, I don't think I like that change in strategy. Uh, this ring is... Yeah, that seems like an upgrade. Alright, and then we can... Meadow... And meadow. And do I have a sense of where the blood golem came from? It was in this space. I don't know. I'm sure it's related to the blood grove somehow. Alright, I'm very, very hopeful that we will just finish the treasury so that we can load our pack with more stuff. Have a take home 30% of a higher number of things. But we are, we are hanging on. It is kind of working. I assume this is not even going to be... Well, you know, that is quite a lot more base damage. I... No, that can't be right, though. Alright, a lot of 
really basic here. Okay, sadly the battlefield like cannot possibly matter. This meadow can though. Close enough to this? Probably, right? Yeah, we got the loot. Cool. Uh, Road Lantern me. Definitely this area. No, we'll, we'll put down this grove right as we're about to walk through that. I can't place these over here, can I? No, gro groves need to be on the path. Chrono Crystals have to be adjacent. That's not going to solve it either. There we go. That'll get us there. Uh, and a meadow. I don't know. We can put down a crystal like here. No, we wouldn't be able to meadow off of that, though. We can do it there, and it'll affect some meadows we already have out. And we can also do this. Uh, and then mountain, I guess, just up here. Grove right in front of you. Entering a, another very dense area of enemies over here. It's like, hold on, let's talk about Oblivion. So, when the Lich spawns, he also spawns all these Lich's palace uh, things around him. So, my inclination would be to delete these. But we can get the ones that are on the road and also blow up enemies. So, I guess that's probably the smart thing to do with our Oblivion. I would love to draw another, another couple. That would be lovely that. Actually, I should have probably placed it to the right of that. Yeah, there's a there's an error there. Because then we could have built something next to the road, right? Okay. Uh, a treasury. There's no way we complete another treasury. I can't. I cannot see that happening. I guess put it here. So I was thinking we could put a meadow there, and then build, like, one of these spider cocoons to bloom it. We'll get some nice benefits off of that, and then... I mean, we'll try. From here, we'll try, but I can't... It's very unlikely. Uh, battlefields have to go on the road. Cocoons have to go adjacent. Yeah. I mean, we'll still get some stuff out of it, right? I'm feeling tough for the moment, though. I don't remember exactly how tough the Lich was. You know what? I think it might be the case that I didn't even see the Lich when we played during the demo. So I think I might have died on the way over there. We were we were getting pretty wrecked in the last loop, as I remember it. So who knows? Maybe it, maybe it won't be so bad. I'm sure defeating the Lich once is not going to solve any real problems, but... Okay, these Chrono Crystals can't go anywhere meaningful... And unfortunately, the goblin camp I spawned actually is going to spawn at least one goblin in our path, I'm sure. Okay, another Oblivion was a real good pull. I'm happy about that. So we're definitely going to have to remove some of these Lich's palaces. We can wait until pretty late to do it. Uh, so there's not any place to put this that is actually relevant. May as well build it though, get that one point. And then the crystals don't. Yeah, they don't give you anything right when you build them. So I guess there's a question do I actually want to uh, annihilate those enemies? Because it seems like we're doing just fine fighting them. And I would really like to get one more card to play near this treasury. Yeah, maybe I let that, maybe I let them live. Definitely want to pause when we get out of here, though. Alright, there's that meadow. That's pretty great. I'm actually really happy with that. Uh, and then we may as well just, I don't know, meadow somewhere else. And then Oblivion. This Lich's Palace. 
and the, this one. Yeah, unfortunately, there's still <laughs> still six of them up. All right, well, good luck, me. Let's see what it's like to fight a lich. Oh, you know what? This lit up for a second. I wonder if I could have escaped if I'd had the if I'd had the auto runaway thing turned on. I wonder if there's like a moment before the lich actually engages. How? How is this even possible? Yeah, that's right. You didn't devour me like the rest of the world. Haven't I? Do you do do you really don't think so? He also devoured the concept of grammar. I love a cool skeleton man who is filled with cosmos, though. That's such a good design. What are you talking about? I'm standing right in front of you. I consumed all of your reality. Every one of its elements now rests in a separate pocket dimension. Spaces, living beings, information, even memories. They shall remain there until entropy does its work, turning everything into a uniform static mass. Along with you, of course. You're insane. So, what do we have here? I see. You found a way to interact with other pieces of your reality. To organize, combine, and merge them. But how? I don't see any exceptional talent or knowledge in you. Well, that would be a hell of a thing to have talent at. You hardly even understand what is happening, right? Look, I'll tell you what's happening. A pile of bones is butchering my world and also the English language and thinks that it can get away with it. You're already doomed, and you know it. Perhaps you're just the first in a series of systematic errors. A problem I must learn to solve. Well, let's not waste any time, then. No, I don't think you're capable of feeling regret, but I'm about to change that. That seems unlikely. And that's also definitely not a thing you can change with a sword. So, health and damage are increased, yeah, for the Lich Palaces. Um, he has a soul too. That's cool. That's a good thing to know. He doesn't actually have that much HP. <laughs> that said, he is definitely going to beat us if I don't evade some of those attacks. Yeah, he hits, he hits real hard. And he does seem to be hurling the cosmos it's, itself at us, or at least the concept of the cosmos. But this is close. This is closer than I was expecting. Come on, lucky evade. I don't even know if we have any evasion right now. No, we totally don't. We almost beat him. That... That was actually very heartening. We could do this. We can absolutely do this. Now, I'm sure beating him just takes you past chapter one, but that's that seems like a goal that's in reach, at least. I'm alive, but how? Well, thanks to us. A small group of us dragged you here. It wasn't easy. I thought you people couldn't leave the... How could you fight off all the monsters? They nearly killed me. Well, that's also interesting. Many of them vanished right before our eyes. Some we managed to avoid. But I think most of the beasts were gone before we even left the camp. I think your trips are deeply connected to your memories, my friend. Everything falls apart as soon as you're unconscious. Okay, well that's good news for everybody who's not me, I guess. So what can we actually afford to build? Uh, nothing. We almost brought home enough rations. If I had bailed one loop earlier, we would have had so much stuff. Alright, well I guess it's nothing for now, but at least we have a healthy pile of supplies to come back to after the next run. I do believe that that is where we're going to call it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, tomorrow, there's going to be another hour of gameplay, probably a couple more attempts there, and I think we actually might be able to take down the Lich. You know, the first time, when he's really easy. So come back next time for that, and we'll see you then.